Hey you guys, this is Tom from Tom's Interesting Talk and today we're talking about the five gallon guppy breeding tank. When you see this first clip, this is a clip from about a month and a few days ago. And then I'm going to go into the next clip and this is how the tank looks after a month. You can see all the algae buildup. You can see how long the grass has gotten. You can see just the funkiness of the tank and what a month will do um, in this soil and sand system as far as algae growth and just what a live tank looks like. And then we're just going to have a real qu uh, quick clip of what the tank's going to look like when I'm done cleaning this tank um, and how pretty it is. You know, I want to really take note of how thick and heavy this algae is just after a month. Um, which means, of course, you know, it's a it's an excess in nitrates and then it's an excess of nutrients um, in this tank, which has created these algae blooms and these sorts of things. Um, oh, there's Barney. <laughs> Gotta love Barney. He's my favorite. So we're going to start off um, taking a little look at this tank and then we're going to start trimming and cleaning it up and cutting the grass so to speak and pulling the algae out of here um, and just cleaning this thing up. Remember there's going to be algae in every single sample of water that you, that you put in your tank. I mean even the stuff you've ran through filtration and all that stuff there's still going to be a little hint of algae somewhere on a microbial level um, that's going to end up developing into you know with the right nutrients and the right circumstances and the right situation um, into an algae bloom and algae is good there's nothing wrong with algae algae is helping control um, all the nutrients uh, that are in or helping consume all the nutrients that are in this little five gallon fish tank you see here how long the grass has gotten. I mean, the grass in this has just grown amazing. Um, and I know the last couple times we've done videos, you know, you've gotten to see some of the after effects, but you really haven't seen it in its full blown chaos, so to speak, you know, when it's absolutely overgrown. Um, this grass in particular can get to a point where it it would just totally clog and take over this tank if I let it go. Um, it needs to be trimmed and needs to be constantly uh, manicured and taken care of. Um, this, this grass in particular, it grows from the end out. So giving it a haircut doesn't, I mean, it, it stops it from growing basically, which is a good thing. And you do want to stop the growth for just a little bit, but that doesn't stop the growth of this plant because it will matriculate, so to speak, very, very quickly. Um, where maybe you have five or six sprigs or five or six uh, um, clumps of grass growing, you know, in a month's time, you could have 15 or 20 of those same little nodules growing growing grass because this one here will very much so spread quickly um, and, it, and that's what's that's the cool part about this grass because it will control your nitrates in in your tank as they're being created through your biological um, nitrogen cycle um, you know ammonia nitrites and nitrates as they're created eaten created eaten and created and then they need to be consumed by what your plants so i mean your 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 plants also will absorb the ammonia as well so having live plants in this system is a very good thing and you can create a nice organic clean um, system that will maintain itself this was a month of me not doing anything to this tank. So you saw the pictures from before, you saw the pictures after, and then you're gonna see the video of how the tank looks after I'm done cleaning it this time. Um, right now, you'll see I'm giving the tank a little vacuum. In this video, we are gonna be setting this tank up 
to start breeding our next um, fish, which is our cardinal tetra. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down to one filter, and then I'm also going to put a heater in this tank because currently it does not have a heater in this tank. You know, I live in Arizona, Mesa, Arizona to be exact, um, and it's very hot outside. And you know, my cooler keeps the house at a very constant 80, 81 degrees, and this tank stays in that. 78 to 80 range on a pretty regular basis depending on how the air conditioner goes off and on um, so I'm not real concerned about the heat level you know or the consistency of the heat for my fish I think uh, the house stays at a pretty constant temperature and this tank also stays at a constant temperature but when you're breeding you want to breed at a little higher temperature especially cardinal tetras they like it to be a little bit warmer which spurs the breeding I think 82 degrees is what we're probably going to be running this tank at um, to get them to go ahead and breed. So we're going to cut this tank down to one sponge filter. We're going to add. Um, we're going to add a heater to it to maintain this very consistent, little higher um, heat threshold or temperature threshold. Uh, because I don't want to try to heat my whole house up just to maintain this tank to breed you know so we're just going to warm this tank up a little bit just so that we can you know create the right environment for our cardinal tetras that we throw in here um so what i'm really trying to do is just knock down the algae and hopefully this system you know because this is a soil and sand system you know there was so much nutrients in the soil you know i'm sure that it's just going to take a little bit of time to cycle all those nutrients, you know, out of this soil a bit to the point where then it's going to start creating nutrients on its own, you know, as bacteria and microfauna and things like that start, you know, breaking down waste and working their magic, so to speak. I mean, you'll see already that I have a nutrient cycle or a nutrient layer for where we've tamped down all the algae and now we're hoping to create you know a biological strip or biological separation so that we have another set of anaerobic circumstances that you know my my um, roots from my plants are going to be able to dive through and then collect very rich nutrient rich substances um, and that's going to happen. So we gave the tank a little vacuum, you know, to try to get as much of the algae out of the sand as possible. And we also went through and scraped, you know, again, using a razor blade. Remember, I use glass tanks. If you use a plastic tank, do not use a razor blade on your plastic tank. You will, it will forever scratch it and you will always see those scratches. Um, glass tanks are a little more nicer in the sense that you can use a razor blade on it. Um, so the tank was scraped down with the razor blade um, and then I used a little, I have a, it's like a braided fiber, you know, that's very coarse, kind of like your scrubby pads. Um, it's a washcloth um, and it's very coarse and it really takes the algae off the glass um, pretty effectively and quickly. And you saw me run that um, washcloth through the tank and take off all the algae and kind of clean up the glass as best we possibly could. Um, I only took one of the tank or one of the sponge filters out, and then we're going to leave one sponge filter in there. I have not really cleaned this sponge filter because I don't want to mess with the biological system of it. It's a pretty coarse sponge filter. Um, and it seems like it's still doing pretty well as far as working through everything. I did pick quite a bit of, of the algae off of this one filter so that it, so it's not clogged up, you know, it's still able to function. But I did not clean it, change it out. I just took the other one out. This sort of algae, I can tell you one way I've been able to truly get the algae off of the sponge filter. And I, I'll tell you this, it's, it's sunlight. You put it outside, let it dry out completely, and then it just flakes off the flakes off the sponge filter. And that's the only way that I've found to truly be able to get, I mean, the majority of this algae 
off of your sponge filter and kind of you know reinvigorate your sponge filter so to speak so that it it it, it, it has its almost its full capacity so to speak um so now here you see this is just my beautiful tank i put a little cock in there of course um and then you got that nice blue glass all cleaned up and ready to go you know with the little sand in it um, believe it or not that sand that's in that glass it carries a bunch of my little um, snails in there um, it seems like they go into that sand that's in that glass and they breed in there and I get you know a big a big bloom so to speak of the trumpet snails sorry So what we're going to do is we're going to take quite a few of the baby guppies out of this tank and we're going to put them into the 155-gallon tank. And then to, over the next couple weeks, so I have a couple batches of uh, baby guppies in here, as you well know if you've watched the videos in the past, um, two different mothers you know, and two different batches at two different times. So I still have some of the smaller um, baby guppies in here that aren't quite big enough to make it in the big tank because I still have giant dinos in the big tank and I still have grommies and other tetras and things like that that would potentially eat a baby that's this small. So we need to get them, you know, we need to get these babies to at least a, a decent size. Uh, so that they won't fit in <laughs> the mouths of these bigger fish that I have in the 155 gallon tank because you know it's a doggy dog world when it comes to fish if it'll fit in their mouth they will eat it and it doesn't matter if it's alive or dead so, um, so what's going to happen we're going to transition this tank to cardinal tetra breeding tank like I said one sponge filter we're going to have a heater in here um, we're going to end up taking my two julii catfish that are in here out while we're doing the breeding cycle because you got to remember um, cardinal tetras are uh, egg layers not um, um, live bearers um, like the guppies are so we're basically going to clear everything out of this tank and then we're just going to run just the biological system and then we're going to put cardinal tetras in here and see if we can get them to spawn and lay eggs and see if we can breed cardinal tetras. Um, when we get to that point or when I add my cardinal tetras to this tank to start the breeding process, you know, I'll film all of it and make sure you guys are aware of what's going on. Um, and we'll walk through it step by step. You know, we'll walk through the breeding process, some of the little movements and dances to identify, you know, when they are breeding or when they are trying to spawn. Um, and lay the eggs and fertilize the eggs. Um, and then I'll also, you know, show the show you the identifying factors for male and female on the cardinal tetras as well. Um, but that's to come. So please, you know, you guys pay attention to my videos. That one should be pretty soon. I have a couple more weeks. You know, maybe we'll go through one more month cycle. I'll clean the tank one more time. Um, and then we'll start that breeding process for sure. That'll give these guys three to four weeks more to get just a little bit bigger. We'll pull them out of the tank and then we'll start the breeding cycle on the neon, or I should say the cardinal tetra, sorry. Um, and it should be a fun process. You know, I love doing these sorts of things. You know, I'm gonna get to grow brine shrimp. Again, we're gonna get to do, and I'll show you how I grow brine shrimp and how I'm gonna do it. And we'll just get to go through that whole process of watching them lay eggs, identifying them, and then watching our little youngsters grow up and get bigger and, you know, eat the brine shrimp that we breed and, and go through their lives um, in hopes that we can fully stock the 155-gallon tank with a massive amount of these beautiful red and blue cardinal tetras. I'm excited, you guys, and I'm hope you're, I hope you're excited, too. Hey, thank you for spending some time with me. You know I always appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Thank you again. Please like and subscribe. You know that's what makes it all go around.
you know it does hit that button subscribe do what you need to do to make sure you support Tom thank you very much